if we had more people did this at Yale, we wouldn't be getting posts like this, this, or this on the Overheard at Yale Facebook page. Hello, hello, it's Vic, and today I'm going to be talking about a few productivity habits that I do every single day that have helped me not only with my productivity at Yale, but in life in general, even when I'm working 9 to 5 over the summer. These things and these habits that I do have really helped me get stuff done. Before I get started on the video, I just wanted to say that I incorporate productivity into my own life and I'm sharing these tips with you guys not so you can go around being like, hey, I'm productive, but because I think productivity allows you to take the limited time that you have, do more work with less time and save up more of that precious time to do other things that you genuinely care about. And also, another thing that I want to say is that I don't think productivity just means productivity at work, but it can also mean being productive when you're taking your breaks, meaning when you're doing your work, you're not thinking about resting, and when you're resting, you're not thinking about doing work. But anyway, we'll get into some of them when we get to the video. Tip number one is to plan your day the night before. This is so important because it gives your day some direction from the moment you get up. You don't have to sit in front of your to-do list, figuring out what to do and waste time. You can just immediately get started on your day. But what I usually do when I'm planning my day is that I will look at my entire list of to-dos and I will pick three to five things to do for the next day. And these things have to be small and achievable. Maybe read one chapter of a book for a class or get the laundry done or go to the gym. Things that are very achievable. You never want to write anything that seems too large like finishing the whole essay. Unless you're rushing a deadline and it's due tomorrow. Or anything too vague like study for Spanish tests, like what does that mean? You know, break it down into what chapters you need to study, um, what types of tests you need to take to revise. And this also applies if you're working, right? What tasks do you need to do? If let's say you have one big project you're in charge of, what are the different steps you need to take in order to achieve that project? Is it speaking to someone? Is it having a meeting? Is it sending an email? Break that large project down into smaller tangible steps so it doesn't feel so intimidating. Something else that I do is also look over my Google Calendar to see whatever events that I have planned for the next day and my bullet journal calendar for any deadlines that I might have coming up. I know it sounds all very complicated but I promise for me it only takes 5 minutes because well, I'm used to it all already. So tip number 2 is to turn on airplane mode before you go to bed. I know this sounds like a very simple habit but it's very very important because it can be so overwhelming to be flooded by notifications, emails, messages first thing in the morning. When you turn on airplane mode, you get to decide how you want to start your day instead of being reactive to everything that the whole world is asking of you. Now because I have airplane mode on every morning, I never waste time sitting on my bed, scrolling through my messages, trying to answer to people. I can get up right after the alarm rings if I don't press news and just get started on my day. If I'm trying to be really productive, I don't turn off airplane mode until I've done at least two to three tasks on my to-do list. On a related note, even when I turn off airplane mode, I do turn on do not disturb so I'm not checking my phone every single time there's a notification and my phone buzzes. Tip number three is not to multitask the important things. Study after study has shown that multitasking does not work. In fact, there's no such thing as multitasking. Your brain is just switching between tasks, meaning that it's giving less attention to each task and as a result, being less effective and forgetting most of the things that it learns along the way. But in my opinion, I think multitasking small things are fine. So for example, if you're listening to an audiobook while doing your laundry or you're ironing while watching the TV, I think that's fine. Tip number four is to do the most challenging thing first in the day. I personally find that I'm more likely to finish a challenging task a lot earlier in the day, which is actually proven to be scientifically true. A lot of research has been done into the study of willpower, which says that the more you use in the day, the less you have towards the end of it. So your willpower is most likely to be the highest in the morning, meaning that you should really take that time to do the toughest things first, like cranking out that really hard paper or going to the gym. 
also let me add a caveat here that there are always exceptions to this so i know people who are genuine night owls and are really really productive at night if that's you identify the times of the day where you are the most productive and use that time instead the key here is to ask yourself if you are genuinely productive or you're just telling yourself that you're a night owl because you don't want to wake up earlier but if you're like me and you actually want to get a decent amount of sleep maybe try doing the most important things first Tip number five is to use your commute wisely. Whether you spend 15 minutes walking to class or a couple of hours driving to work, that time you spend commuting is precious time that could be used doing other things. And for those of you who are thinking, I can't work while driving or sitting in the train, well then I would say productivity is a lot more than work. As I said at the beginning of this video, it's also putting aside the time to do the other things that are important to you in your life. So for me, that might look like meditating on the train or on the walk to class in order to get some mental clarity before I start my day. Or it might mean reading, whether it's actual physical books or audiobooks. And if you're into audiobooks or want to try them out, I would highly, highly recommend this app called Libby, which is a free app that connects you to any library in the world as long as you have a library card with that library. And then you get to access whatever ebooks and audiobooks that that library might have. Something else that's really cool about Libby is that it allows you to connect to two different locations, two different libraries at any one time, or more than two actually. So because I have a library card in Singapore, and also because I have a library card in the US, where Yale is in New Haven, um, I can connect to both New Haven and Singapore's library and access their books at the same time. Also, Libby allows you to download the books and read it without Wi-Fi or internet while you're on the way to work, so that's a plus. If you're a Singaporean, NLB has so many ebooks and audiobooks, like honestly, I've read so much more this year because of Libby, so I would highly, highly recommend that you check Libby out. I'll try to find a web link for the app, and if there is, I'll leave it in the description box down below. I'm not sponsored or anything, I'm just a big fan of Libby, but Libby, if you want to sponsor me, I'm here. Tip number five is the five minute rule. If you can finish it in five minutes, finish it. So that might mean replying an email immediately or doing chores like the dishes or vacuuming. So if you can do it, just finish it. It will save you time in the long run and you won't forget it. But this doesn't apply if you are in the middle of another important task, which leads me to tip number seven. which is to write everything down. You know how sometimes your brain decides to remind you of really important things to do right when you're sitting down to start work or you're doing something really important? Well, that happens to me all the time. Just when I decide to sit down and write an essay, my brain's like, wait, you gotta send that email. And then I go down this rabbit hole of to-dos, getting really distracted. And a couple of hours later, I find myself staying up really late to do my essay. Or if you're like me, not even finishing the essay because sleep is more important, am I right? Anyway, to avoid that problem, now what I do is that I write anything that pops into my head down onto like a notepad or a post-it so that I can deal with it later and I just focus on finishing my essay or giving myself that allotted time to finish whatever is most important to me at that particular moment. Then later in the day or week, I usually block out some period of time, usually when I'm the least productive, like right after lunch or something, to finish all of those to-dos that are usually very small administrative things that take five minutes all in one shot. Writing everything down also applies to when you're not in the middle of something important. So for example, you could be bumping into a friend in the street and being like, hey, we should grab a meal. I would advise you write down a reminder to yourself to do that somewhere accessible like your notes in your iPhone or you practice the five minute rule and just do it on the spot. Maybe if more people did this at Yale, we wouldn't be getting posts like this, this or this on the overheard at Yale Facebook page. Tip number eight is to be mindful of Parkinson's law when managing your schedule. So Parkinson's law says that work expands to fill the time that you allot to it. Meaning if you give six hours to a two hour task, you're going to spend six hours finishing it. I personally fell prey to this in my freshman year. I was taking four classes at year, which is pretty average because most people do four or five. And I was only doing one extracurricular, which was club frisbee. And then I twisted my foot the first tournament of the season. So I literally had no extracurriculars the rest of my freshman year. But at the same time, I was so unproductive and I felt like I never had time to finish my assignments well. And I always told myself, oh, I don't have time to go out and have fun. Fast forward to sophomore year and I'm doing five classes. I'm leading two clubs that I founded. I meet friends for weekly meals. I exercise nearly every day and I still have time to do things that are really important to me like 
washing plates or doing yoga. Did I become some kind of superhero overnight? The answer is no. I just became more aware of Parkinson's law and just started managing my time better. So work smart and not hard. I actually do both. <laughs> Tip number nine is to take deliberate breaks. Even on the days I'm rushing a paper that's due like tomorrow or in two days, I always, always take breaks. First of all, taking breaks is so important for your work productivity. It helps you to increase your decision-making ability, to become more creative, to retain more of what you've learned and so on. There's a lot of science behind this as usual and I'll link a good article in the description as well. But notice that I say take deliberate breaks, meaning 10 minutes scrolling through Instagram or Facebook does not count. When I use social media, I find that 10 minutes, 15 minutes passes so fast without you even realizing it. So what I do now is when I take my conscious breaks, I go for a walk or I have a good conversation with a friend or I listen to an audiobook using Libby and walk around the campus, you know, for 10 to 15 minutes. And I always come back feeling better as compared to when I'm at my desk using my phone, scrolling to Facebook because it doesn't actually feel like I'm giving myself time away from the table and away from my work. So tip number 10 is to stick to and streamline your routine. Your brain is always trying to find ways to make life easier. It automatically falls into habits and falls into routines. That's why you notice when you get up, the first thing you do is brush your teeth. You don't even think about it. So if you have certain things that you do every single morning, think about trying to streamline that routine. Like putting out your work clothes the night before if you're always trying to figure out what to wear. Another idea is having a set couple of dishes that you always eat for breakfast. Things like that. My point is if your brain has to make less decisions earlier in the day or even in the night, you know, you're more efficient because you're your brain space is free up to do other things and make other more important decisions. Okay, so I have a bonus tip number 11. I didn't include these things because they're pretty conventional tips, but things like taking care of your health is so important for your productivity. So things like moving your body every day, it doesn't need to be intense, can be things like yoga, going for a walk. But the point is to get that blood pumping. Getting enough sleep is so important, which ties into waking up early, which has helped me so much in my life. In the fall semester of a sophomore year, I was waking up at 5.30 every day and that really helped with my productivity because I had like that huge chunk in the morning, which I usually filled with things that were good for my well-being, meaning yoga and meditation or work. It also meant that I got to sleep a lot earlier, which I love. Hi guys, post editing Vic coming in here after like 12 hours of non-stop editing. But I just wanted to drop in to say that I don't do all these things 100% of the time. No one is perfect and neither should you expect to be able to do that too. So it's just slowly incorporating whatever works for you into your life in whatever capacity that you can. For those of you who are thinking, who is this woman? Why does she think she's qualified to give me tips? Please check out my other videos, which explains kind of my motivations for creating videos like these and what kind of value that I hope that these videos can add to you guys. And leave me a comment if you do any of these things or if you have some tips that I haven't mentioned. Hope that this has helped fellow students out there or, you know, anyone, even if you're working. See you in the next video.